everyone. This is Girls Unscripted. We're your hosts. I'm Carolyn. I'm Kate. And we're remote. Woo! It had to happen eventually. We're just two very busy ladies. And my God, I don't know if we're going to pull this off, but I really, really hope so. I think we're going to do it. It seems like everything is recording. We do have about 27 backups, so I think yeah. we're going to be okay. Only time will tell. Oh my God, reunion time. We're here. I, I can't believe that we finally made it to the Vanderpump Rules season 11 reunion, part one. Part one. Thank God there are three. So let us begin. Is it? Is it? Thank God there are three. Do you think we needed three? Yeah, well, we can jump off on why I'm pissed off. They didn't start the episode with them all watching the ending of the show. You know what, Carolyn? I didn't even realize that, to be honest with you. And they did cue it up as if, I guess, I bet you that is the last, like, five minutes of it. It's literally going to be the last five minutes, and Ariana's going to say that one quote that we saw of, like, I'm just really upset. And they'll be like, thank you so much, everybody, for a great season. (laughs) And that's going to be it. They do it every time. No, well, and that's my thing, too, is, like, why does Bravo always, like, cue us up into thinking we're going to have this, like, three-part action-packed re- re- reunion trilogy and part one all they fucking talk about is like summer moon pump and our lala and schwartz flirty that one i was crazy that one made the list out of all the things we could guys, talk about guys it did not we didn't need three parts for this like spare Wait. me before we get into it let's let's give the fans what they want the gavity gap. Oh shit! Sorry, I went straight in. No, I think it was me. We just got excited, like we got. We got. Excited. We got we really excited. We, yeah, I know. It's because we ha- we aren't in person. We didn't have that like ten minutes to get all the like giddies out. That's true. We literally hopped on the Zoom. We were like, "How do we record?" Wait, I think I'm recording. Wait, is this? Ba-ba- okay, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, we didn't really like chit chat. We like barely even said hi. You just logged on, and we're like, "All right, what do I do?" That was the most professional we've ever been. See, tape there. from the scene of the crime. Oh, yeah. And then Carolyn was trying to prop up her phone with scotch tape. What were you trying to do? <laughs> tape your phone to the wall with no. scotch tape? No. <laughs> no. And that's what it seemed like to me. You were like, don't judge me, but I have some scotch tape here. And all I could see, <laughs> well, I couldn't even see what your hands were doing. <laughs> that's actually amazing. I wish I just said yes right then. That would have been even better than what happened. No, I, I have a tripod, but the freaking iPhone stand wasn't here. So I like, it's a boom thing. I tried to tape it on the boom. What can you do? Not, not as exciting gibbity gab. I'll start with some gibbity gab. Talk to me. I'm in Nashville, Tennessee, where I'm from. I'm at home. I'm looking at my high school bedroom as I speak. Uh, that's always a trip. That's kind of that, surreal that you're doing it, your podcast in your high school bedroom. That's cool. I know. I guess. Hey, Harpeth Hall. We were the honey bears. <laughs> but the, I didn't bring my black sweatshirt, so I had to bring... <gasps> I know. So I almost canceled the entire thing. And I was like, (laughs) well, I I have to bring something equally as unimpressive as a black sweatshirt. So I brought this shirt. Okay. If you're watching, it's a, it's a big X double XL t-shirt that says good neighbor. I think it says for the people up top. It's a, in an emblem. I don't want to touch the mic. I'm scared. There's a pirate. There's a pirate on the bottom, like a buccaneer. Oh, my God. I never, Kate, I never What did you that think that was? Right just now. a design? It was just part of the emblem. I thought it just was like, a, <laughs> like a Harvard sign. <laughs> no, honey, that's a buccaneer, baby. What's it say at the very bottom? It says, oh, my God, it has text on the bottom. I didn't even know that either. <laughs> What does it say? I can't see it. It's not English. Oh, no. Yes, it is. Commonwealth. <laughs> <laughs> not English. Oh, actually, it is Commonwealth. <laughs> for Good Neighbor for the People Commonwealth. Again, not sponsored, but there is a website online where you can get mystery $6 t-shirts. And let me tell you, oh. if you're ever in a group scenario and you just want to have a good laugh for like... 10 minutes order mystery t-shirts open them one by one they are the craziest selection of shirts i've ever none of them make sense and in fact for my bridal pajamas i forwent pajamas for my bridesmaids and just gave them all six dollar mystery t-shirts 
That's amazing, actually. That's amazing. It was, it was, I was so wondering, fun. I was wondering, I was like, where is she going with this? With the no, t-shirt? No, I, I brought it back. I brought, I brought it back. Six dollar mystery t-shirts, gave them to my bridesmaids. We all opened them up. And it's like the only thing that the photographers got like of that moment. So I just have a bunch of like me being a beautiful bride. And then us holding up like Gandalf, like smoking a pipe being like token hoken. Like, no, <laughs> that's amazing. I love it's that. It's really fun. Yeah, Six dollars? Yeah, six dollar mystery t-shirts. I got a tuxedo t-shirt once. Um, Wait, is that not the t-shirt you wore when you were out? And, and, and sent in the videos for Girls and Scripted when you first got uh, your... Yes. Yeah, yes. When so you this first is got the second... Great point. This is the second appearance. It's now a motif. And <laughs> That's sick. You know what? You chose the right shirt. You chose mm-hmm. the right shirt. I How about that. you, my friend? How was your week? How are you doing? <laughs> I'm so embarrassed by this. But I caught out of work today because I had a bellyache. Oh. Like, how old am I? But I woke up this morning and I was like so nauseous and I I'm never nauseous I, like it's rare I I'm not one to puke even when I'm super drunk did you puke I'm, well yeah I mean I was like dry heaving over the toilet for like hours like it was just horrible and I didn't know what happened so of course obviously the first thing I google is how pregnancy quickly does, how quickly does morning sickness start yeah. if you're pregnant and I obviously My mind know went there. I'm but I know I'm not. I like know I'm not. But I think as young women, like anything that happens to your body, you are immediately going to think that you are pregnant. It's like bloating. It's the first thing for sure. I'm yeah. a little emotional today. Pregnancy. I got something in my eye. Pregnancy. Like everything is, am I pregnant? Could this be a symptom of pregnancy? Did you but take a test and are you feeling better now? I literally had my period like yesterday. No, oh, bubble. That's great. <laughs> like, like that's why I'm like I'm re- being absolutely ridiculous right now. Like this is crazy. But I don't know why I was so nauseous. I literally don't know. I just it wasn't my morning. I didn't feel great. I didn't go to work. Thankfully, producer Rachel who produces this podcast also is essentially my boss. She hates to say she's my boss, but she was my boss, and she was like, because I was like so. I'm one of those people that I get so guilty when I call out of work and everyone's like, you can call out of work, Kate. Like people can have sick days. And I'm like, no, like I can't. Like I just feel so bad. Did you have perfect attendance in school? No. Oh, I didn't give a fuck about staying home from school. Okay. See, we flip flopped. But we flip flop. <laughs> anyway, but you're feeling better now. Yeah, but I also like didn't really eat anything today. So it's easy to say like I feel better when I don't really have food in my stomach. But I'm drinking like a lemon soda water out of a red solo cup because that's our thing. I didn't want I know. to ruin it. I did. And for that, I'm ashamed and very, It's okay. Very sorry. You didn't wear your black sweatshirt. You, you know what? It's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. Yeah, it's but totally yeah, so fine. Com- I'm trying to think. I did do something cool this weekend, though. What'd you do? So the first part isn't going to sound very cool, but bear with me. I went, okay. to the Col- I went to the Culver City car show by myself. And do I like cars? Am I a car person? No, but it was something to do. The real reason I went is because on the flyer at the very bottom, there was a picture of SpongeBob and it was like, come out and see like Tom Kenny and the whatever. Like, so I'm like, Tom Kenny, I look up Tom Kenny. He's the guy that voices SpongeBob. So I'm like, I don't know what's happening at this car show, but I got to go and check it out. So I show up and the guy that voices SpongeBob, Tom Kenny, has a band and they're like a 1950 style, like sock hop, like the girls are all singing, like, <gasps> like it was <laughs> sick, sick. And like he, I was not there for very long. He didn't do anything SpongeBob related, but there were people in like SpongeBob merch that the second he walked off the stage, they like ran to like get his autograph and like. He had like a fucking groupie of fans. So I saw the guy that voiced SpongeBob and that was cool. Could you tell via his singing voice that he was indeed the voice of SpongeBob? No, but you could tell he was like, like if I didn't know what he looked like, I would be like, I bet this guy's a voice actor on the side. Interesting. You know, you know what I was thinking while I was watching him? I was looking him up on the stage and I was like, because I used to think this shit all the time when I was younger because my favorite show is Full House. Always has been, maybe always will be. Solid Except pick. for Vanderpump Rules, obviously. Right. But, and Jersey Shore. You know, there's some others in front of it. But Full House is always a top one. I know what you mean. Yeah. You get it. 
And I always would think to myself, even when I was younger, Joey Gladstone, the one that was like the comedian, and he would do all the like voice impressions. I always thought to myself, if Joey Gladstone is so good at like doing all these impressions, don't you think he could be a good singer? Like, can't voice actors like just impersonate good singing? So, I mean, I still don't know the answer to that, but I know that the voice of SpongeBob is a good singer, and I'll leave it wait, at that. Wait, no, no, no. I, it, it was another episode of Girls Unscripted where you told me that he he is a singer. Wait, No, I said you're Alanis you're Moore not, said. Alanis I'm Moore said wrote a song about him. I did say that. Alanis Morissette, who is a singer, yeah. wrote a song about him. You know, what a lot of people don't know is that Joey Gladstone from Full <laughs> House actually sang You Ought to Know, and they just said it was Alanis Morissette. <laughs> he was actually the real singer on that record. Damn, he's so talented. He can he can do it all. Fuck, but So that was cool. Well, you know what I like to say about L.A.? I'm not in there right now, but when I am there, I always say, God, I love this town. I love this town. It's just I was li- the weirdest no. things happen there. All I time. was literally thinking that when I was at this car show and I'm like, all right, I have fucking SpongeBob on my left. I have <laughs> the Ghostbusters car on my right. And I've just got like little kids like just running around with beers in their hands. Like this place is crazy. <laughs> it's sick. All right. So let's uh, talk about the reunion. Shall we? I have a question. Start. I have a question yes. for you. I'm going to start it yes. off with a question for you. Hit me. Why is why is Lisa there? Why is Lisa there? I have a better question for you. Is Lisa okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> like I'm serious. I wrote this down a few times. I was like, she just seems a little out of touch with them. And I don't know if it's because like the real situation of her relationship with them is coming out, but like she didn't know about who they were living with. She didn't know a lot of things. And she seemed like on Watch What Happens Live, she was cuckoo, which I loved, but she just seems different. She like, it was almost as if, you know, you're in middle school and you had to give a book report and you didn't read the book. And you're just kind of using context clues to maybe try to make it seem like you know what's going on. Like she didn't know anything that was going on. And then there's at one point, she's, basically lying about like, well, you know, Katie and Ariana, they were arguing about this, that, and the other. And Katie and Ariana are both like, um, uh, that's not true. Well, she was like that, but then we, then Lala ratted out Katie, and I was like, oh, I wonder if that rumor is what got through the rumor mill to Lisa. I don't think, I don't think anybody talks to Lisa. I think she was there, and she was like, I have to make it seem like, I think she got briefed. I think she got briefed. The day before she went there, maybe even in her dressing room, and they said, these are going to be the talking points. This is what you need to know. And she just ran with it. She just spoke a little too much. She spoke a little too much. She was trying to seem like she was in the know with the kids, which I appreciate, but I was also like, is she okay? Like, is her memory going? She just seemed a little off her game to me, but who knows? She did not need to be there. But at least she... I bet she watched the show. Ariana didn't even watch the show. Yeah, yeah. Where did I did? Should we just we can get there? Yeah, let's go in order. Let's start at the top. So the great thing about Carolyn being on a different time zone than me is that she watched this super early and then just was like, "Here's my talking point." So it was like you gave me like a great like rubric to go off of. Is that what it would be called, a rubric? Yes, a good um, structure, scaffolding. We get it, and they get it, so we can move on. Okay, so the first thing on your structure scaffolding was, <laughs> and I will, and I will say, look. I, r- real quick, I know we're kind of like, we talked shit a little bit in the beginning of like, you know, this shouldn't have been, what well, was mostly me. This shouldn't have been three parts, blah, blah, blah. There were some juicy things that happened. So let's start off with something that I actually think couldn't be more the opposite of juicy. It's the driest shit and I'm tired of hearing about it, is the house situation. Hmm. Yes, yes. So the fact that Schwartz is even contemplating living with Sandoval is just like, I'm over, I'm done hearing about it. It was like, finally, like Sandoval and Ariana moved out from each other. I'm like, great, we're never going to have to hear about this again. And then now we're talking about Schwartz moving in. I'm so over it. And Sandoval saying his dad has roommates at 60 years old. Look, I'm not here to talk shit on Mr. Sandoval, but that checks out. There's a story there and I want to know it. You know what I mean? Like there's, I want to know that story. 
I've always been a little bit curious about Sandoval's parents too, because we've met both his mom and his dad separately. And I just cannot imagine the two of them together. Are they divorced? Are they still? T- I assume he, by him saying roommates, he was n- not with his wife. Yeah, I think they're. Div- I would hope they're divorced. Or what if he's like, <laughs> yeah, my dad's had a roommate. It's my mom. They kiss yeah. sometimes. Yeah. What do you? Th- what's What's your take on the house? <laughs> do you have anything? I'm just shocked. It's still so back and forth. Like the fact that I thought we kind of were in a good place with it, and then it was like. Oh, Ariana, like, basically served Tom again to get this thing sold. What a nightmare. Like, no, it's just, it, good God, get it over with already. To me, and look, you know, I think you and I both, and I think everyone that listens knows that we're pretty team Ariana. But I do think that the both, it's both of their faults. I think that they were both stubborn. Granted, I do not think that she should have been the one to move out. And we did ask last episode, like, why is it that she, like, please, like, someone comment, like, why is it that Ariana needs to be the one to move out and not Tom? And someone commented and just said, misogyny. So, like, I do think that maybe, <laughs> and they're not wrong. Hell yeah. But I, I, I still disagree with the fact that she needed to be the one to move out to begin with. But, like, they were both being, I would probably assume, pretty stubborn. Well, thing. if it's gone on this long, remember in Calm Law School, we had, like, a I'm not going to tell this story. It's going to be too convoluted. What's but they, Calm Law School? Commercial law. Really veered left here. And we wait, 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 wait. You went to commercial law school? No, but I did my undergrad in, in commerce and business. And that was a requirement was to take commercial law. I'm also questioning this as if I even know what commercial law is. And I don't. I mean, you you do, you just don't know that you do. It's like, you know, whenever we get Diet Coke to come on here and be our sponsor, there's laws around how that works and who's liable uh, for what. And, and you know. I knew we were keeping you around for a reason. We're going to need yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, do you have anything else about the house? Oh, no. That's why we all started with this. Basically, if you put everyone's hands up in a room, we did this for a com law thing, and said, okay, Keep your hand up if you think it's Tom and Ariana's fault that they're still in the house. And you go by months. So say like one month, two months, three months, four months. Because a lot of like penalties and things are just a matter of public opinion. So it'd be interesting to see the room like go down in terms of like who would still think it's Ariana's fault? Who would still think it's Tom's fault? Because it changes as the time goes on. Like three months is very different than six months. It's very different than over a year. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's all that was about. Man, I took us somewhere crazy. It's okay. I now know what calm law is. So yeah, you're you're so welcome. All right. So then. They obviously had to address this pretty early on, but they talk about Raquel, Rachel not coming back. And I loved that when they were talking about Rachel's podcast, Sandoval's like, you listen to that thing? Because I'm just like, bitch, Girls Unscripted listens to that shit like it's Bible, baby. Yeah. I bet more. I look, I would like to know the stats, but I bet more people listen to Rachel Goes Rogue than Everybody Hates Tom. Everybody Loves Tom, whatever it's called. I didn't even know that was still going on. I think it is. I don't know. I don't listen to it. But no. uh, I have. I have listened to it. Let's be real. I could understand why Sandoval like, isn't about the podcast. I mean, she literally just talks shit on him the whole time. Yeah. In this section, Lala says that she stands by everything that she said last reunion. And it just further proves what we talk about every Girls Unscripted is like, the flip-flopping. Like, does she hear herself talk? How can you stand by everything you said last reunion? But... Be buddy buddy with Tom Sandoval. I'm just speechless by this. I have no words at this point. Only she can answer that. I would be so interested if we like had her in a room and and showed her like Andy does. If he did it for one of this is a great thing for Watch What Happens Live, Andy. It would be like the segment would be called Make This Make Sense and then show a clip of Lala saying one thing and then her saying something else. And then just curious, how does that make sense? <laughs> It's very See, I just I, that you're absolutely right. And I just don't think they will ever do something like that with her because I do think she is in cahoots with producers and they're in her ear and they want to keep her happy because you would think that they would be like showing her clips to like hold her accountable from this this crazy shit that she says. They don't want to get popped. <laughs> Did you like that? <laughs> good one. That was good. Thank you so um, much. They talk- 
they talk about grooming again. And Lala is kind of like standing up to Tom. Tom was saying grooming means it has like something to do with a minor. And Lala's like, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. To me, it kind of seemed like Lala might believe that. And she didn't say this. This is just me saying this. Do oh, it's 100 percent. Lala yeah. feels like Rand groomed her. Yes. Yes. That's the only reason she would have felt. I mean, I would I would 95 percent say I assume that's why she felt so passionate about it and even had an opinion on it in the first place because right. she wouldn't have spoken up on it had she not looked into the topic a little bit. She clearly at least Googled it, you know. Right. Well, it's funny you say that, actually, because I then did Google it. And I will say, like, most online definitions do include that it does have something to do with a minor or someone who's underage. But that one Rachel Goes Rogue episode that I believe we both listened to, they go in depth and they talk about how really it can just be someone who like you can groom someone who is like easily manipulated or like an impressionable person. I do think like in general terms, in the terms everyone knows, sure. But for Tom to just be so defensive over that, like, well, it's not grooming because she's not a minor. I mean, I understand why he'd be up. <laughs> it's almost a silly sentence to say, but I understand why he'd be upset if he were being linked to pedophilia, if if he, in fact, is not a pedophile. Because <laughs> yeah. those are, you know, but I, I don't even know if groomer and pedophilia are in the same category. I'm not claiming that they are. I just, and Tom's brain, I know that's where he went. Just right. as he talked about where he went with the George Floyd thing. You know, he just he just goes there and doesn't really think about why, why he's going there. Right. Well, I also think like, I think in that section too of them talking about Raquel, they call her a coward and they kind of like shit talk her a lot, which is like, annoying to me because it's like get the fuck over it if tom and we talk we'll talk about this soon because it's it comes up in the reunion had all these like suicidal thoughts and all this stuff but like but then you're mad at raquel for not coming back to the show that is causing you to have all these suicidal thoughts like if you actually cared you would support that person and be like if that's what you need to do that's what you need to do because he knew that she was having dark thoughts that's what she always says on rachel goes rogue and it's like but now you're gonna sit here and call her a coward when she literally told you that she was fucked up mentally and having dark thoughts and that that going back to the show wouldn't be healthy for you i mean i think Hopefully, I've made it clear how I feel about it. I think it's absolutely disgusting. And anyone who needs mental health help should be able to have that in its full capacity, whatever that means for them. But also, you know, what what else do we expect from Tom Sandoval at this point? I do think there is something I I understand if there's a sentiment that, you know, well, if you're going to say your side of the story, you might as well say it to our face. As Katie would say, say it with your full chest, bitch. You know, <laughs> like, but... But if you do listen to Rachel Goes Rogue, there she talks about it, how just why she addresses that exact question of why she couldn't go back to the show, but she wanted to stay on the podcast. And it's it's legit. Going back on the show is a very, 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 very different experience mentally, emotionally than being able to be removed from it and give your side of the story separately. I, you know, I, I see... I could see both sides, maybe. Totally. And obviously, yeah, no one is questioning Raquel on Rachel Goes Rogue. And she's essentially allowed to say whatever the fuck she wants. But that's her prerogative. She chose to miss out on the paycheck from Vanderpump Rules to get her side of the story out there. And that's that. Like, just, just yeah. let her fucking be. Who cares? Let Who her cares? fucking be. Who let her cares? fucking be. And I, I think uh, this is the next subject, but the go. lawsuit when he yes. says, you know, to do it to me is one thing, but to do it to Ariana, she, I think she doesn't have a soul or whatever it was. The quote that came to my mind was the enemy of my enemy is my friend. And he's so manipulative that I think this is his way of trying to weasel in to get in some good favor with Ariana or the group of like, see him on your side. We're a team. I'm not that well, bad. Right. We both have this one common enemy. Like you hate her. Mm. I hate her too. Like we have this in common. We're both being sued by her. Like finally we agree on something. And <laughs> yeah. you're right when he did say that, cause I wrote that down too. Like it did kind of seem like, he was almost saying it as like Ariana and I connect on this one thing now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But or that thing, that, they that one thing would never fucking happen 
if you didn't do what you did in the first place. So I don't really know what the end game is here. I will say I did feel like I can never tell what's fucking real and what's fake. Sheena was really standing up for Ariana during the lawsuit conversation, just saying how ridiculous it is. I don't think that's fake because Sheena hates Raquel and Raquel also put a fucking restraining order on Sheena. But it was nice to see her stand up for Ariana, but didn't really stand up for Tom. Like everyone was kind of like, yeah, he should no. get sued. Yeah, well, and that's why I wish they had played those 15 minutes at the top because you know it would have been a very different dynamic had Mm. she been saying that after Ariana just saw all the things that she said about her at the very end. I wonder if they're saving that to the the third part because they know they won't get like a good reunion if they they show it in the beginning. Because or they, maybe they, yeah right like they don't want Ariana to shut down they well it's fucked up they want Ariana to think these girls are her friends and then they're gonna drop the bomb at the very end and then everyone's gonna be sad and crying because if they would have done in the beginning it just would have been an apology tour for three yeah parts. and and you're totally right that's probably exactly why they didn't do it because they also probably thought she might have just walked out like her behavior this season she's made it clear that she's just not gonna do it <laughs> like yeah. if it's something she doesn't want to do they spring this on her at the top like that'd be a really shitty thing to do yeah so. this is fucked up but i can't help but think that tom when, when when they're talking about the suicidal thoughts that tom was having i can't help but think that he kind of preyed on lala and sheena to gain sympathy and i'm not saying that i, I don't think that he felt those feelings but i feel that it was pointed in him telling lala and sheena of everyone of like like remember first of all when i went through this reunion i'm like damn we actually there was a lot that we went through this season like i forgot that lala sheena and lisa had that conversation of lisa like saying be easier on him he's not doing well blah 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 but there to me there was a reason that it was lala and sheena and we talked about this in a previous girls unscripted i think that he thinks that they are very easily manipulative And I'm going to use them to look like the villains while I'm the victim. Yeah, which is funny because that's what he was blaming Ariana of doing. Right. To him. and, and, And get this, blaming what Ariana was doing, which he did. She did confide in him in private, not on the show. He's the one that made it public. And then for them all to sit there at a fucking reunion and talk about Ariana's suicidal thoughts while she just sits there and listens and listens to him have any say on how she was feeling. Like, I I feel this way about the whole Katie and Ariana and Lala thing of there are some conversations. You guys have been friends for a long fucking time. A a lot of you have been partners. There are some things that- (laughs) Too many of you have been partners. Too many of you have sock swap (laughs) spit. But there are things that you can say off camera that can stay off camera. Not everything needs to be brought to the camera or the reunion. But when Tom said that at the the very end of season 10 about how Ariana would use that against him, her privacy now became public. And look, we're fucking sitting here at a reunion talking about it. I think it's bullshit. And we're here commenting about how they're commenting on it. And I just like, on I, a I feel bad for doing <laughs> on a podcast. And like, I, I personally just, I don't even like touching it. Like, I, I, I think this is something that you're totally right needs to be left with them. And I want to respect Ariana and everyone who goes through suicidal ideations and mental health trials and just leave them as they should be, which is personal not public i agree let's let's make a pact that this will be the last time we ever fucking talk about that how about that i spit on my hand and we're shaking now yeah but if it gets brought up again we have to report the news so yeah exactly we have a job if it was actual spit it would mean a little bit more yeah yeah um oh god okay talk about talk about difficult subjects to discuss I cannot believe we're even talking about this. And the fact that he even said it, like I still hearing it back, cannot believe that he even said it. I I see where Tom was going. I see his point of like, this is not real news. This is real news. But his comparisons were just like so fucking tone deaf, dude. So tone Mm -hmm. deaf. Oh my God. Katie had a great quote. She always does about intent versus impact. I think it was. And I was like, boom. That's it right there, Tom. Like, he can't just apologize for the impact he had. We understand your intentions. Uh, trust us, we sort of get it. We understand what you were saying. We know you're not that bright, that yet it didn't even occur to you that that'd be a horribly, like, 
problematic thing to say for a variety of reasons. But it's still, regardless, impacted. It's like the, um, oh my God, the Haley Bealey drama. Are you caught up on that? Oh, yes. That, I don't know where I side on that one. I know, but I mean, it's the same thing of like, whether, and she apologized profusely not uh, it's argued whether it was a, it was the best apology. I don't think I don't I don't look real quick I don't have a opinion on the actual video but I think it was a bad apology I mean she said like I'm just a normal human I'm not like a famous like she didn't even say famous she's like I'm not big enough to be invited to the Met Gala yeah it was it wasn't good but regardless of what she said the impact it had was clearly impactful if you're listening and you don't know this like famous TikToker she's like 10 million followers took a video of the Met Gala to the sound like let them eat cake and people said it as was, as she was dressed as Marie Antoinette correct and people and please correct me if I'm wrong were like this is so tone deaf there's wars and people dying every day like this is horrible right essentially without getting too political she made an apology video about it but the other video was still up. She never deleted it. And to me, I'm like, she got 21 million views on that. She wants the paycheck. That's why it's not deleted. Oh, that fuck. Was my theory. That's so true. She has since deleted it. But then in this apology video said like, you know, I'm just a normal girl. Like, I'm not even elite enough to be invited to the Met Gala. But she's made videos in the past saying her New York apartment is like $17,000 a month. She's got 10 oh. million followers. She's And she was like, after I reported on the carpet, I went home and watched the Met Gala from my couch. There's literally a video of her saying, I just got back from all the Met Gala after parties. Like, yeah, come on. Just yeah. like, just why can't people just be like, my bad. I fucked up. I used to say that shit about Sandoval in the beginning. Like, just yeah. say I fucked up. Yeah, I yeah. really fucked up. My bad. Don't, It'll go my bad, so but. much further. I'm sorry, but like, God, people can see right through that shit now. <laughs> That's like in the Valley, which we'll talk about next episode, where <laughs> Danny was like that. You understand that's not an apology. What did he say? Oh, uh, Jesse said, I'm I'm sorry if you felt offended. Yeah. By what I was saying or something. He's like, you understand that's not apologizing for what you said. Well, is that not how Joe apolo- apologized and quote to Katie? Like, I'm sorry if I hurt you or something. And then Katie was like, if, if, or something like that. Oh, These God. People, it was, man. Ah, just, it's, it is so cringe. I cannot even. Just replace the if with the that and you're good. I'm sorry that I hurt you. I'm sorry that I offended you. Whatever. Moving on. Moving oh, on. I, what I did love, though, real fast, is Tom was like, no one even read that New York Times article. They just read that little part. I read the article. You read the article. I think a lot of people read that New York Times article. And by the way, the rest of that article might not have been quite as bad, but it was still pretty fucking bad. And a lot the, of people read it. From cover to cover of that thing was nuts. We do touch on Lala and her baby and her custody battle with Rand. And uh, like, I have a serious question. I feel like we talk so much about this custody with Rand. Like, what is the agreement that Lala wants? Does she want full custody? Like, does she think that Rand shouldn't have access to his child? Like, what does she want out of this battle? Because I personally am not too sure. And I think whatever Lala and Rand went through, that's what Lala and Rand went through. But do you, is she trying to get full cut? Like, I never, I never know if that's like the best thing for a kid to like fully take them away from a parent. But I don't know how Rand is as a parent. So My what, answer what, what, is, is, talk to me. Here's what I got. I have no fucking clue. And I can't remember if like she mentioned it and we just don't remember. But I also feel like because it's litigation, she hasn't been speaking about it. So we just don't know. Like I'm and not, I, I'm not harp, harp harpshin her mellow or i'm not like going against her i just like genuinely don't know you're not harpshing her mellow dude i don't know i just had a fucking brain fart when i was, was, I, was I just I, want to know if that was a, a saying that i did harshing know. harshing her mellow no i think i was i was i was mixing up like i don't want to harp on this with i don't want oh. harsh her mellow so I'm this is you. a new saying on Girls Unscripted. You don't want to harp people's mellows. And look, yeah. Lala, I'm not trying to harp your mellow, girl. But I just I just want to know. We're just curious. We're just curious what the dealio is. I think that makes sense. Why is everyone acting like Sheena's postpartum OCD is something that she just like made up out of thin air? Like I get it. Sheena's fucking dramatic and annoying. But like 
It is a real thing. I Googled it. I Googled it before I even made this comment because I was like, I just want to double fucking check. And it is real. I didn't get the sense that people were doubting if it was real. I think we, I, I got the sense that people were also like, is that real? Like, I could not know. Right, okay, yeah, because Andy on. was like, Andy was like, oh, I've never heard of that. I just felt like yeah, Andy, yeah. Andy was sus. Andy was sus. Yeah, I was like, oh, I've never heard of that as a thing. But I mean, I didn't know it was a thing either. But when someone tells you they have OCD, I, I will believe them. I have it. You should believe me. But not postpartum. So different things. <laughs> Yet. 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 <laughs> oh, girl, still you just time. wait. Well, I mean, I had morning sickness today, so we're almost there. What I did love in that section, though, of talking about like Sheena and Summer Moon and whatever, I love that Brock has been such a big part of helping Lala out with her family. And I'm not on board of this narrative of like, Lala and Brock, like they talked about a couple episodes. I think Brock seems like he's doing all he can to right his wrongs. And I appreciate that it seems like he is like the male figure in Lala's life. I think that's sweet and I'm here for it. From what we've seen, and don't cancel me if this isn't true or like there's just more. I don't know the details of what all happened in Australia, but his behavior that I've seen of him being a partner to Sheena and a father to Summer Moon and a friend to Lala. I don't love that he's like still on the Sandoval train, whatever, but he seemed like a pretty stand up guy and kind of funny. He is funny. I think I think he reeled it in a lot. I think when we first saw him, everyone was like, fuck Brock. And they kind of talked about that at the reunion. I think he Mm. did a lot of maybe some therapies, like we talked about some self-work. Like it does seem like he is really trying to right his wrongs. I think he needed to do reflecting. I think maybe the Vanderpump group made him really take a look at his life and they questioned him on shit that maybe other people didn't question him on. So that is one positive. We did talk about, they did talk about Brock's kids at the reunion. And he was like, I did go to Australia, but I didn't see them because like they didn't make the decision to see me. Are Brock's kids old enough to make a decision like that? Or is it Brock's like children's mother that are making that decision? I don't know how old his kids are. Add that to the list of things I also don't know. No fucking idea. But he's not that old, so they can't be that old. Unless he had them when he was like... I think he had 16. them young. Like they Did could, he? They could, well, I mean, what he could have them when they were 20 and he's 32. They could be like 12 years old. I don't know how old Which he is. Which I think is, is old enough for them to to decide if they want to see him or not, I think. Yeah, I don't. I just don't know. I will say something that kind of made me go, huh, was the fact that everyone was crying during that scene of Brock talking about his children and wanting to be a better man, including Ariana and Katie do make me feel like there are layers to this and maybe he has opened up more off camera and maybe he does try and see his kids, but he's denied. Like it did seem to me like they all kind of felt bad for him. And I think a couple years ago it was like, well, you don't deserve it. And now like they seem to really sympathize with him. Well, he got a compliment from Katie Maloney. I mean, that's the highest currency of all time. It's above the, the U.S. dollar. It's it That means a lot. When she said that she's eating her words and that he is an amazing father proves to me that there is a lot more that we don't know that we don't about know. that whole situation. Because Katie Agreed. is, as Tom Schwartz said a couple of seasons ago, a social justice warrior. He called her yeah. a social justice warrior. and. I I think Katie is extremely smart and smart enough to not say that he's an amazing father if she knew otherwise. So I don't know. I think that there's more to Brock that we don't understand. And we're going to need our reality show of Sheena and Brock going back to the farm on Australia that we've talked about before. The pig farmer's daughter. Yes. If they made Brittany and Jax take Kentucky, we need Sheena and Brock go down under. To New Zealand. Okay. Now let's go back to like, Remember well earlier in the, this episode, we talked about how Lisa kind of acts like she knows everything. One scene that she literally acted like she knew fucking something about that she obviously didn't know fuck all about was Ariana and Dan. And she's trying to make it seem like she knows anything about their lives. And You're living together. Like, she's like, oh, and you're living with Dan in New York, right? And Ariana's like, no, he has no place. No, I'm not. To me, it was obvious that Katie and Ariana do not fuck with Lisa. And I think maybe it could have something to do with Chef Penny. 
Lisa's friends with Chef Penny. I don't know. But like, I feel like every time Lisa says something, they kind of like side eyed her a little bit. Well, I think they've outgrown the show. And I think outgrowing the show also comes with outgrowing um, going along with certain antics of the show. And guess who's kind of pulling all those strings is the producers, including Lisa Vanderpump. I also get that feeling, too. I don't know if they're like over over her. Because I just don't think they would. I mean, they everyone revered her on that cast. I think because they knew where their paycheck was coming. But I think these girls. Oh, that's interesting. I think these girls thought there's not another season. And if there is, I'm likely not coming back. There, you don't have anything on me anymore. You know, like there's not also, much you can do. Lisa is not the god that she once was. Like she yeah. was the show. And I feel like like remember when. Stassi came crawling back and like like begged Lisa and apologized. Yeah. Lisa like I think Lisa used to have a lot more pull and she doesn't anymore at yeah. all. She's not the show. People are not watching Vanderpump Rules for Lisa Vanderpump anymore. And and you know you're probably right. They probably either realize we're not getting another season or I'm probably not going to come back next season. Did you see online? that everyone is taking Vanderpump Rules out of their Instagram bios. Yes, I have that written down too. Yeah, so now granted, I didn't even know they fucking had Vanderpump Rules in their Instagram bios to begin with, but there's only so many characters you can have in an Instagram bio. I think because Vanderpump Rules is like no longer really airing or maybe they're not filming or it's paused that they're like, let me take it out so I can put something else in. I don't think it's like that big of a deal, but... Maybe. I actually am on the opposite side of this one. I think it says it all. I Mm. think there's no way that all of them at the exact same time just had the hunch that they want to save their character limit by getting rid of Vanderpump (laughs) Rules on their bio. Okay, you know what? Fair, fair, (laughs) fair. I think that they all got some news and it's like, all right, well, that's no longer a thing, so it can no longer be there. Or, I mean, I just can't think of another explanation for it. No, except for you're right. My dumbass explanation that all of them at the same time are like, oh, I know, I'll take Vanderpump Rules out of my bio to put something else in. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right, Carolyn. But did but did everyone do it? I saw a lot of people. Do everyone it. except I- for Sandoval and someone else that like isn't that big of a person. Oh my god, everyone except for Sandoval and Joe. Can you imagine if that was just the show now? Just Sandoval and Joe. Oh, my God. That would be unhinged. <laughs> I'd actually probably enjoy watching it a little bit more, to be honest with you. It'd be like you. kind of watching a psych experiment. I'm like, what is going to happen? Yeah, I would sign me up. Yeah, I'd watch it over some other pairings I would probably watch. Yeah, I just mentioned here. Here's another example of Lisa seeming a little out of touch, <laughs> not knowing that Ariana's living with Dan. Then we go into James and Ali Bally. I my literally my only note here was calm down, what the fuck? And I don't even remember what that was for. I just wrote calm down, what the fuck? Oh, I know what it is. I know what it is. It's because James was was visibly upset and, and did like a whole rant, including talking about Tom getting his wee wee sucked downstairs and he was like but I am over it and Andy was like you don't seem yeah over it at all you seem very you know on over it that's why we love James Kennedy that's what I mean that's what he's at a reunion for I honestly had no idea that that was a point of contention for him but when I thought about it I was like oh you know what I'd be pissed too I actually would be pissed too because he got a lot of grief being like Oh, man, he jumped right into something. And then Ariana was less time or around the same time. And she did not get the same scolding that he did. So I understand why he was pissed on that one. And I feel yeah. bad. I'm like, oh, I didn't even think about that. But it is different. I do think everyone keeps saying Ariana and Dan started dating 10 days after, which they didn't. But it was soon. But also, James and Raquel, Raquel didn't like, as far as we know, brutally cheat on him. So then he, and they weren't already in like a loveless relationship. Whereas Ariana and Tom, Ariana got brutally cheated on. They were in a shitty relationship anyway. So it kind of made sense for her to jump into something so quickly. Interesting. Would I preferred Ariana to have dated a little bit more? Yeah, because that would have been fun to watch. But at the end of the day, I'm fucking supportive. So can you imagine who she would have scored? Like it, that would have been really fun to watch. Literally anyone. I heard her do an interview that she said back in the day, she dated Daniel Tosh. From Tosh 2.0? <laughs> wow, Tosh 0. Oh, is it back? 
No, it's just called Tosh Point. <gasps> Oh, God, that's so embarrassing. We have to cut that out. <laughs> that's, really, that's really embarrassing for me. Okay, but, say, oh. say from Tosh.0. Oh from Tosh.0? Oh. It's okay. We can keep the whole thing in. It'll be <laughs> at this point. <laughs> but but I, yes. was that like way if, back in the day? That would yes, be when she was like 22. Apparently, she said she used to work the door at the comedy store or something like that. So that's how she met Tosh.0. They briefly talk about Tom's girlfriend, Victoria Lee Robinson. And every time she is mentioned, do you notice that Tom goes out of his way to say that she doesn't watch the show? Which makes me think maybe she watches the show. Like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm great point. She doesn't watch the show. She doesn't watch the show. Like, and they said, said I don't watch What Happens Live, too. They went out of their way to mention that she didn't watch the show. I'm like, let's be real. As Ariana and Raquel both said, like, he loves to sync everyone up on the same story so that everyone has the same thing going into these public reunions. Like, oh, here's the story. She hasn't watched the show and she's not going to. And that way she won't have to comment on his behavior on it or answer like specific questions. That's probably what happened. I mean, it's the one, it's a, the only, it's the only way that she can justify dating someone like Tom Sandoval. Well, I, I don't know. Exactly. I don't know. And then. They talk about Lala and Schwartz, which to me, I just think like it it frustrates me on a level of being frustrated for Katie, because I just feel like can this cast stop trying to make Schwartz and other members of the friend group like happen? Half of them were trying to get him to make out with Raquel last season. And now they're like getting off on the fact that they think he and Lala were flirting. Katie and Schwartz were not just some fling. They were fucking married. And she gets no respect. They giggle about Schwartz getting with other people and she's sitting right fucking there. It's crazy yeah. to me. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't get it. I think it's I think it's incredibly inappropriate. No, it is rude towards Katie. I, but I think that's Katie's plight in all these seasons that she feels like no one really takes her seriously on anything. No, they fucking don't. I actually have that note at the end of the episode where I say, I just think Katie is an easy target for people to fucking fight with. And it makes me sad. Mm. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to get there. To be honest with you, so much happened this season. I honestly forgot the pump closed. Like, I forgot that was a storyline. Did it need to be? I also didn't really care. No offense. I mean, pump was fine. I, I didn't I really didn't, care either. I was yeah. surprised. What I was surprised to hear is that they considered changing the name of Tom Tom because even in the height of Scandal, Tom Tom was always kind of popping off. Like it was as if nothing happened. I went there like maybe two weeks like after the news broke and they I assumed that they would t at least take down the giant photo of Tom Sandoval and Tom Schwartz kissing and that was still there. Like it didn't. It seemed to me like Tom Tom was safe. It was Schwartz and Sandy's that was in the crossfire of Scandal. Well, they definitely got the brunt of it. I mean, that's where like they would vandalism is a strong word, but that's where customers were going in and writing on the mirrors and stuff. And that's where I mean, Schwartz and Sandy's is already is whenever I'm there, it's dead is all I'm saying. I've only been there three times, but every time has it's three too many. Honestly, two too many. It's, Once is fine. Yeah, yeah. Like I know and, I agree. And, it, it, they were it's already hurting, but Tom Tom, I think Lisa was just saying that I bet it was a one liner thought that someone said of, do we need to consider changing the name? No, we don't need to go that far. And Lisa probably said, oh, yeah, we considered having to change it because it was such a big deal. That is a total. I just pulled that out of my butthole. I don't know if that's true or not. No, you're probably that's how right. I feel. You're probably right. Yeah. It's a theory. We, we theorize on this podcast. We theorize so much. So they talk about something about her, which, again, Lala makes her hilarious joke. Something about her, more like nothing about her. She said that more than once. When he said, do we have an open sandwich shop? I was like, oh, no. Oh, God, that's a horrible idea. I thought he meant, is the sandwich shop now all open-faced sandwiches? And I got so Carolyn. upset for Carolyn, a moment. Carolyn, shut the I fuck was, up. I was, I was looking forward to like the Greek goddess and like all these things and an open face. Like what all can they do with that? I just really was, I was really. That is really life. where your mind was. <laughs> <laughs> do we have an yes. open sandwich shop? We're you know, a sandwich shop, sandwiches. but we only serve open face sandwiches. <laughs> I wouldn't hate it, but. Well, my thought when he asked that of like, they were like, well, when this airs? Yes. I'm like, that is a risky question because I actually think it opens May 22nd and it fucking aired May 14th. So it actually isn't open. Right? Did they show that? I remember in the, in the like 
preview it was like yeah when this airs it'll be open did they say I that think they, in this i think they said it i think they said uh, it and i thought that was risky but whatever. they were off by a week you know we know the scheme truth of things of three years a week is nothing so i mean however long it's been to get this open so they were close we'll get yeah that. all right let's really dive into like the final bit that was kind of Lala versus Katie. And now rumor has it is that, and by rumor, I mean Lala Kent literally said it probably on an Amazon Live, that her and Katie have had beef since right before season 10, but it was never really seen on camera and they agreed to just kind of like be civil with each other. But Lala has said like, if you look, like we don't really fuck with each other like as much as we used to. So I just think that was something interesting to keep in mind that I did remember in that moment that like they don't really like each other so basically what happened in this scene is that lala revealed that essentially katie was talking shit on ariana to lala and it was a private conversation that i don't know it just annoys me because sure i do think katie was having issues with ariana and then regretted venting to lala about it because she got over it like really quickly But God forbid that Katie wants to have like a private off camera conversation with a friend that she feels comfortable enough to vent to. Like anybody that has had a friend knows that sometimes you need to vent about friends. And it would be crazy for Katie to not have feelings and emotions over the fact that like Ariana is doing Chicago, doing Love Island, living in New York, like doing Dancing with the Stars while they're trying to open this sandwich shop. Like, If Katie didn't have feelings about that, I would think that was weirder than her having feelings. But I think what Lala was trying to do here is be like, well, Katie said this and Katie said that. And to Lala's surprise, the audience is more mad that Lala revealed a private fucking conversation. Like not everything needs to be on camera. And it just further proves that Lala and Sheena's life is Vanderpump and Katie and Ariana don't need every fucking bit of drama to be on screen. Wait, is the internet saying, is the internet mad that Lala, more mad that Lala brought it up than than what she said? From what I've been seeing, it seemed that the internet is a bit frustrated that she kept this secret inside and revealed it on the reunion. And it like wasn't even like that big of a deal. Like it was a conversation that it was because it was a private conversation that her and Katie had. And then like. Like, it's just the internet is like, Lala really will air out all of her friends on national television if it means she can get a paycheck. That's where the internet's going. Oh, man. Okay, then I I would get canceled because I kind of understood it. Hear me out. I mean, if she's having difficulties with Katie, I think the theme with what they were saying was Katie has a tendency to not bring what's happening off camera on camera. And for them to even clearly... Clearly, there was, where there's smoke, there's fire. I mean, there was clearly some smoke. If Lisa said there was some, you know, disagreement about Ariana being away or whatever it was, to me, it felt like, oh, shit, Katie got caught with her pants down here. And I was like, that's really embarrassing for Katie because she, you could tell on her face, it was like, oh, shit. Because she almost, she didn't, I, I could, to me, it felt like it was like, she didn't know what to do. Should she deny it? Should she not? Whatever. Um, what I thought was interesting was that Ariana didn't say anything. So that made me think, wow, this is the first time Ariana's hearing this, too. In which case, I mean, she wasn't just saying light stuff. She was saying Ariana hadn't paid the rent, which, falling on the heels of the house scandal of not paying rent, not a good look. And her saying, like, she's off on Broadway and I didn't know about it. Katie clearly was not communicating to Ariana that that was, Ariana had no idea uh, from the looks of it, from that episode, that she had any, for her, her not to know at all that the fact that Ariana went to Broadway and Katie was not told about it sooner was an issue for Katie is wild to me. Like, that shows me that there are communication gaps and this looks like this was a huger huger this was a bigger one than i realized that's what i took from it now was it shitty of lala to air it out yes but it was also eye-opening to me a little bit of like okay katie ha- might actually there, there there might be some truth here that katie tends to sweep things under the rug as much as she can and not bring it to the camera no i actually completely agree with you and i would not cancel you 
for your point. Thank you so that. much. I appreciate I, that. I could see Lala's point of view of like watching this season back and like, like, Lala being made out to be like the bad friend when Kate and Katie's like the good friend, but Katie was talking shit. Like Katie wasn't Little Miss Perfect. I will read in case you or any of our listeners haven't seen this. Katie did post a response on her Instagram story. I I read this. Yeah, go. Because the internet was torn. I'm with you. It's like, yeah, Katie's talking shit and Lala's just supposed to sit there and pretend like she's Miss Perfect and she's not, you know doing exactly what Lala's doing. But at the same time, yes, Lala is airing out shit that probably didn't need to be aired out. Well, we so, know Lala gets triggered. And I'm not saying that's an excuse for her, but I felt like she was being pushed and pushed. And she, you could tell she was trying to hold it back. She was trying to like not do her Lala ways. And it felt like she snapped and said it. Not that that's an excuse for her, but at least I think there was some thought process of like, I've been holding that because she's been holding that stuff in the entire season. If this has been happening the entire time. Sorry, go ahead and read what Katie said. Yeah. So, so here, here's Katie's response to the whole thing. She says, I'm someone who has suffered from imposter syndrome for as long as I have known myself. Hence why I was apprehensive about opening the sandwich shop on my own. So when Ariana was going through not only a world of hurt, but also getting some amazing opportunities that changed a lot of things during a pivotal time. I was extremely sensitive to what she was going through, but also very supportive. I was also dealing with immense insecurity about what I could take on and simply didn't want to put that on her. I had an emotional response that didn't feel appropriate bringing to her front door. So I went to where I felt safe or where I thought I was safe shade until I could find what the appropriate conversation was to have with Ariana, which of course I did. And we have had plenty since. Hold on. Which of course I did. And we have had plenty of since. Yes. So I think that is like a good response. It does seem again like she's blaming Lala, but I get it. It's like I fucking told you something in confidence and now you're using it against me. What I'm a little confused about is this DM that Katie sent Lala saying, get a therapist because you're a fucking clown. So like if I received a DM from someone like Katie and then that said that and then I'm expected to keep your fucking secrets like, uh uh-uh. I think Lala was just bringing shit up in the past. I just feel like Lala, it was really doing her best to kind of play the victim in this Scene. I think Lala normally stands her ground, but right now she's trying to be like, boo hoo, what about me? Like when she says to Katie, I felt abandoned by you this season, and then claims that she didn't jump on the Tom Sandoval train. It's like, I think Lala perceives herself one way this season, and Katie is perceiving her how personally I have perceived her this season. So what I would thought was interesting about Katie's response, going back to my theory of if I thought we were watching on the reunion in real time, Ariana figuring out that Katie has said these things that I thought would be weird. This D or this uh, Instagram story insinuates that they have had these conversations. So I think that's, those are two different things because it's like, what are they putting under the rug and what are they not? But what didn't make sense was that Lisa brought Again, smoke, there's fire. That Lisa brought something up. They denied it. Lala confirmed it. They denied it, then confirmed it. You know what I mean? Like, there was enough push and pull on this that I was like, I feel like there's more to this story that we just don't have all the pieces to. Right. It's almost like when you're like, things aren't going well with your significant other. And you're like, we're fine. We're fine. No, we're fine. Exactly. Nobody talks about that. We're fine. And then it comes out of like, Okay, actually, we got in, like, this huge fight. Like, yeah, yeah, I, I, I do exactly, get it. Yeah. I do get it. I do get it. So I that actually brings me to the question of the week. I feel like I always say this when I pitch the question of the week because I genuinely want to know. Does Lala have a right to bring that up at the reunion? I'll word it better when I put it on the Instagram. But, like, does Lala have a right to – does she have a right to say that? Does she have a right to bring that up? Because – You know, at the same time, they are on a reality show. This is their job, and this does have to do with what they're filming. But, like, I don't know. Also, someone needs to lock Katie's phone up in a way. Like, she just doesn't even... The fact that she sent the the message to Lala via a DM... Yeah, why are they communicating through DMs? Aren't they close friends? Like, that's such a weird way 
to me for someone to be like, hey, by the way, we're best friends. No, we're not. I'm telling you on Instagram that we're not. And that right, you're like a fucking D- clown. DMing is like what you would do of like if you're on one show and like you watch someone else on another show and you like DM'd and like yeah, said you're a fucking like, clown. Like, hey, yeah, I, yeah I do. exactly. It just seemed weird. And I was like, oh my God, Katie, tequila or not, I think she just has a little bit. She loves a rage text. She she just has a little bit of an anger thing going on sometimes, which I think yeah. she also has acknowledged and is like working on. I do think yeah. she's she's trying to be better about that. Yeah. So yeah, again, if you are wondering where you can answer our question of the week, we are Girls Unscripted Pod on Instagram. I also wanted to read you like this tweet that I saw, Carolyn, that I was like, yes, this is fucking it. It, the user is, I mean, this is like a very popular internet person. It's she's speaking with Emily Hanks. And the tweet says, everyone works so hard to help Sandoval look better. They translate his words. They coach him. They prompt him to take a moment to explain his George Floyd comments. It's so nice to see everyone do that. If only Ariana could stop being so miserable and move on already. Like, like that's the thing. It's like, Ariana, she's so miserable. Just move on already. Oh, but Tom... This is actually what Tom meant. Oh, and Tom, we want you to explain the pseudo racial comments you made about comparing yourself to George Floyd. It's like, let like get why does Ariana get no fucking grace? And Tom Sandoval gets a red carpet of grace just laid out for him every fucking time I turn on my TV. It's so true. And I think it goes back to kind of how they started the show of like, well, Ariana, you've literally had a, a New York Times bestselling book or and you've done all these you're on Broadway you've done all these things you're gonna be host of Love Island I think everyone's like well just because she won this she deserves a little less yeah. oomph to get back in public graces but I, I I think I think the listeners know that we don't really agree with that yeah I think there's this is a good comparison right she didn't win anything okay yes yeah winning that's a good is point. winning is when you enter a sweepstakes and you win by chance she earned her things she mm-hmm. earned everything that she got. Like, I guess that's why just... people would think it was handed to her. But she was given opportunities and she made something out of no, it. No, no, no. And I, I want to make clear that that's not what I meant at all. Because I, Oh, I no, put, no, no. I know. I know you put that in quotes. I put one in air quotes because, like, I, I meant she won the breakup. Not that she won the opportunities. They're, like, my dad always says... Uh, success is when preparation meets opportunity. I think I said this last podcast and this was just, I think she was very prepared her whole life for opportunities to come. And when they came, she fucking took them by the horns. You go, Yeah, girl. she she could have said no and cried in her fucking bed all day and been miserable. But that's what they wanted. Because she if also, she would have done that, then they would have felt sorry for her. They don't feel sorry for her because they can't, like we've mentioned before, they can't separate that the two things are different. Opportunities is different than getting your fucking heart broken by someone you trusted the most. Also, I think it's pretty fucking crazy if anyone argues that she doesn't even if she wasn't the best Roxy, I don't know. I've seen mixed reviews on her. The fact that she could be Roxy. Do you know what it, ha- it takes to be Roxy Hart on Broadway? Like you have to have insane amounts of talent to even be considered right. for right. something like that. So I don't know. Out of all the things like Love Island host, you could. Yeah. Even no talent, even talent aside, you just have to have a lot of time and energy and patience. Like she works all the time. I think like you need being to- on Broadway isn't easy. Like let's but I'm just saying let's say she didn't have talent. She's still choosing to put herself through like strenuous work every single day by being Oh, on of Broadway. course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totes. But Totes my goats. Do you have an ASMR for us today, my friend? Well, I don't because we got yet another comment about the ASMR. Did you see that? We did, no. We did. Now, they still gave us a great review, and it was like the sweetest review, and thank you so much for doing it. We literally asked them to do it, so we're glad. But I am I kind of want to go without it one week just to see what it feels like. Just see I what it feels it. like. Here's the thing. I want you to always do what makes you happy, okay? And if this I makes you happy, then we will abstain from the ASMR. And if I feel, if I... <laughs> If I feel like I'm not being my authentic self next week, we'll bring it back. But I just want to see what it kind of feels like. 
If you like are up in bed tonight and you can't sleep and you're like, stupid, stupid, I should have done the ASMR, then, you know, we'll reassess. All in all, do I think this reunion needed to be three parts? No, I could have pretty much done without most of what they talked about. I think they could have summed up all the good parts in like maybe 20 minutes versus an hour. But I'm I'm not complaining because I will take all the Vanderpump content that I can get. And I will say if they've already covered like hot button topics like suicide and stuff like that, they just got that out of the way. Episode one, it's episodes two and three, like who knows what's coming? Well, Joe's coming. That's for sure. Joe and oh, Allie. I forgot. I don't even. Uh, that's fine. I'm excited it's fine. for Joe to come personally. Yeah, but we know what it's going to be. It's going to be more of the same. That's fine. It's fine. It's- I'm excited. Since we're not since we're not doing an ASMR, let me leave you with a fun fact that I learned. Okay, on that's great. Maybe and maybe this is a better alternative. Think maybe because I got a lot of facts, but and I just watch a lot of TikTok. Uh, there's this uh, creator. Fuck, I wish I knew her name because I'd love to give shout outs. But she is the one that always goes through. Like, let me tell you how much all the outfits cost that everyone wore in Vanderpump Rules. And she went through all the outfits on the Vanderpump Rules reunion. And Lisa's snake or uh, like blue cheetah print blazer is over five thousand dollars. Just the blazer, a blue cheetah print blazer, five thousand dollars. I just want to leave that. It's like on Watch What Happens Live with Gordon Ramsay, which was nuts. Y'all should watch it if you haven't seen it. Oh, I watched some clips. She was drunk. She was so drunk and feisty and speaking a lot. And it was funny to see Andy kind of be like, okay, rate it in. But one of her things was like, Erica wasn't rich enough to have both the top and bottom of my outfit, only the top. And I was like, damn, Lisa, say it, girl. I did Same see with the whole that. Chest, bitch. I, I saw that segment. It was, it was funny. See, that I like. I think Lisa is going to thrive on a show like Vanderpump Villa, I think that she is just not needed on Vanderpump Rules anymore and she just needs to kind of lean out a little bit. She yeah. spoke too much of that reunion for me. Sorry, Lisa, mm. but you did. Well, then you would have thought she did way too much and watch what happens no, live. No, but watch what happens live is fine because that's like they were there for her. Like, yeah, on that's the Vanderpump true. Rules reunion, she didn't really have much to do this season. But she just needed her to look pretty. That's what I'm saying. Like, Vanderpump Villa, like, say and do whatever the fuck you want. Like, I'll, I'd love to see more of Lisa on Vanderpump Villa. Like, it's... It, God, I gotta get on Vanderpump Villa. Right now. I honestly have only watched two episodes. I'm acting like I fucking watch the show. I don't. But I, I wanna, I'm gonna watch it when I have more time. I'm gonna watch it. Nice. I think it was a pretty good Valley episode this week, too, personally. Yes. Well, actually, I don't know if I thought that. But I'm excited to talk about it. Well, let's... Uh, Stop the recording, start the recording again, and go talk about it. What do you say? Yes, but first we're going to thank fans and everybody. If you're listening to this point, we love you so, so much. Continue to rate, subscribe, all those things. And if you have an in, a Diet Coke, just let them know that I exist. (laughs) Thank you so much. I um, do get DMs. I try to respond to a lot of them. And a lot of you have been saying that you love the podcast. And just that truly means so much, seriously. And uh I hope that this whole remote thing went well. Let us know what you think about it. We're not, we're going to try not to do it all the time. Like personally, I think it's more fun when we're together. Carolyn, do you feel weird that you can't hear yourself in the headphones? I'm scared that I've just screamed into this mic <laughs> for an hour Like and I don't half. like that I can't hear myself anymore. No, this is, this is odd. I prefer so, our studio, but no, this, this absolutely do. prefer. We have together. lives. We have yeah. lives. I'm, I'm excited. God, I don't even know when I go home this summer, like where I'm going to film. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. All right. Well, we'll see everyone on the valley, hopefully. Definitely. See you there. Bye. 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 <laughs>